How do you think things went out there today? Uh, today it was fun. It was exciting. Uh, it was different for me. It was the first time being in this atmosphere uh, with all these great basketball minds. Uh, it was fun. I enjoyed myself. And have you spoke with any teams, or what's what's the next step after this? After the uh, combine, uh, hopefully get a couple invites to workouts from certain teams, and I'm gonna go with my agent, and we'll figure it out from there. Have you what talked have you with been? the Bulls at all? The only time I talked to them was like, yesterday. Just yeah. being in Chicago kind of maybe make you daydream a little bit about maybe playing for them one day. Uh, you can say that, but uh, my dream is to play in the NBA for any team that wants me, that believes in me, and takes a gamble on me. So. Yeah, that's how I go. You're having a dad that played in the NBA. How much did he help prepare you for this move? It's great. Uh, the connections he has, the way he, he can talk to me about certain things, it's almost as I have a cheat sheet in a sense, just with all the connections and everybody I know. I got guys he used to play with that's like uncles to me. So it is great. Yeah, I, get, I got a great supporting cast. And what have you been told so far? I mean, where you could be slotted, where you could possibly go and, and things like that. Yeah, it's funny. I've heard everything. I've heard 10 to 20. I've heard late lottery. I've heard early second round. So, you know, I'll just stay true to me, play hard, showcase what I can showcase, and it take care of itself. How do you block all that out and not get caught up in where a lot of people are saying you could end up? Just believing in myself. I feel like I worked on my craft to a point where I'm confident in any situation on the basketball court and on the floor. So, like I said earlier, stay true to me, continue to believe in my work and my craft. Your dad said about your year at Duke that you played at the speed limit. How fast can you go? Yes, I think I can go pretty fast, but we'll see. Only time will tell. Are there things you didn't or couldn't show in the year in college? Uh, you could say that, yeah. It was just a, it was just a system. But with Duke, uh, I believed in Coach K. Anything he wanted me to do that was better meant for the team, I was willing to do that. What could you do that maybe people haven't seen? I would say. I was able to play make a little bit more than I was able to showcase this year. Able to do a little more off the dribble, one-on-one uh, -on -one isolation type of things, and just facilitating like well, playmaker. Say that again, sir. I have not had an interview with Utah. No. Oh, it changed in a big way. They heard a lot of things in the beginning of the year, as in they're not going to make the playoffs late lottery, all that type of stuff, and they had a great year. Donovan Mitchell was playing at a high, high level, and uh, it's going to be some great years for Utah in the future. What went into your decision to enter this year? Yeah, my decision to enter the NBA was I felt like I was ready for it. Uh, I worked so hard for countless hours, hours, blood, sweat, and tears and into my craft, and I felt like my year at Duke was good enough to where I put myself in a position that I could make that jump and be successful when I make the jump. I heard you're working out now in Vegas with Fred Sims, who's from Chicago. Uh, what's it been like working out uh, with and against him? Say Fred, that again. Uh, Fred Sims Jr. I think you're working out with uh, in Vegas. No, we have different we have different groups, but he's probably in the same group. But now we're in different groups with it. You yeah. did work out with Coach Capel all year. What do, What do you got to say to Pitt fans who get that coach? What are his biggest strengths as a coach? His ability to motivate, his ability to put a certain level of confidence in you, just the way he talks. He has a deep, deep voice. And he really believes in all his players. So Pitt, you guys got a great one. You got a good one. And then Duke, they just reload again. All yeah. you guys are here, yet they got another strong team. What is it about that university and that coaching staff and that system that does, is so attractive to so many young people? Yeah, it's the brotherhood. They have a foundation, a great leader, in Coach K. The school is amazing. The people you meet, the networking ability, it'll last forever. Who wins in a shootout, you or Grayson? Me or Grayson? We had a couple times in practice. You can ask him that. <laughs> have you interviewed with uh, Minnesota? I have not had an interview with them. I meet with them tomorrow. I think. Were they were they your team growing up? My favorite team? Yeah. No, to be honest, I never really had a favorite team growing up. I just mostly had favorite players. Obviously, at Duke, you were a very potent three-point shooter. How do you think that will help you at the next level? Being able to space out the floor. Like I said earlier, I'm not just a three-point shooter. I think, personally, I'm able to play make, score off the dribble, but having that ability to shoot, they can go a long way, definitely, with the league going in that direction. Just kind of staying on the topic of sharp shooters from Duke, J.J. Redick, were you able to kind of follow what the 76ers were able to do this year at all? Uh, a little bit. I had a little glimpse of it. They had a great run. After the rebuilding process, they, they got some great, some solid pieces now that they're working with, and they had a successful year in my book.
another Duke guy in Milwaukee, Jabari. You look at Jabari and Giannis and what the Bucks are doing. Yeah. What do you think about Milwaukee and where they're headed? They're heading in a great direction. Uh, Jabari was actually, he's my favorite Duke player ever to watch, that I've ever watched. I watched his highlights day in and day out every time before I went to Duke. So he, he's a great talent. But Jabari and Giannis, or Giannis, how you say it? Giannis, Giannis, Giannis. Giannis, Giannis. Giannis yeah. He's a, he's a different animal. The highlights I've seen, the way he plays, jumping over people. I don't really think the league's seen a player like him, that size almost, and that ability, that athletic ability, that length, it's crazy. Who were some of those players you admired growing up that you mentioned? Yeah, my biggest player that I, I love to watch <clears throat> and I aspire to be like is Kobe Bryant. He, he's a hard worker. His mindset to the game, his approach, the way he carries himself. Uh, second to none, and that's why he's on the level he is. And another player I like to I like to follow is Kevin Garnett. Just how he, his approach to the game, and that was one of the people I was talking about earlier. He's like an uncle to me, so I've known him for a long, long time now. So whenever I'm around him, whenever I have the ability to talk to him, just pick his brain and hear him out, hear what he has to say. What kind of things do you think you got to, to learn from him and see from him being that close? Really, just the life of the NBA, the way he handles himself on the court. You see him focus. He's he talking to himself. He's within the game. He, he's slamming his head on the type of type of things. And then off the court, the way he carries himself, seeing everything that he has, being at his house, seeing his house, his cars, everything he has, is motivating. It, it pushes you to try to try to aspire to be that. Was going to California for your final year of high school the right decision and why? So yeah, it was a great decision for me. I personally think it prepared me for the next level, which was college at the time. Uh, simply what happened to having to fly from different places or flying across the country and still having to turn in homework assignments. So it helped me a lot with time management. It helped me get out of my comfort zone. Uh, I left home a year early going to that prep school. So when I went to Duke, when some of my teammates are missing their parents or missing home, I was already a year removed from that. So I was already accustomed to being away. A level of competition every day you could get half an hour. Exactly, yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, Minnesota has some, some great basketball players. But I was looking really for a new challenge. Uh, my team won the state championship while I was there. I was Minnesota Gatorade Player of the Year, back-to-back -back year. So I was looking for a different challenge, and Prolific Prep did that for me. How much do you keep in touch with the Joneses? Say that again? How much do you keep in touch with the Joneses? I uh, keep in touch with the Joneses uh, here and there, yeah. Trey a little bit more than Tyus. You know, I played with Tyus when I was a freshman, and he was a senior. So I was kind of on the back burner of his high school career. But as uh, I've been playing with Trey for a long, long time now, since about fifth grade, fifth or fourth grade. So we stay in contact here and there, and he should have a, a great year leading that team this year. Quick question, have you met with the Wizards yet? I don't know if you asked that, but have you met with the Washington Wizards yet? I have not met with the Wizards yet. Do you know if you're going to be with them at all? I do not. How about the Pacers? I mean, with Indiana tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. It sounds like the one and done rule could be going away <laughs> in two or three years. Uh, what do you think about that rule? The one and done rule? They either should have it or they, or they shouldn't. If the player honestly believes that he can leave out of high school and the league thinks he can leave out of high school, then they should be able to do that. But also getting that, that college education and being that a part of that, being that year, getting that experience, it was good for me. Uh, I enjoyed it and it, it was fun. So it's, that's, that's a tough decision. What aspect of being a pro are you like most looking forward to? The ability to be able to work on my craft, 24-7. Um, when I was at Duke, you know, you had to go to practice and you had to go to class. You wanted to work out, but you had to go, you had a night class, you had to attend. So now that I can finally dive in and strictly just stay on my grind, and that's the thing I'm looking forward to most and I'm excited about. Yeah, you know, I think I heard you refer to having a dad who played in the NBA as having a cheat sheet. But yes, how much more of an advantage did that give you the feeling in terms of preparing you for knowing what to expect once you got here? Yeah, simply just by the people he knows, the, con the connection he has, uh, he's been through this whole process. He's been through the combine. He's been through the interviews. He's been from when he's the bottom barrel of a team to being one of one of the main guys. So everything he, he's told me, he's tell, he tells me, is great for me. So it's basically like having a cheat sheet. How much were you around during his career, just getting a chance to see him play and teammates and everything that came with that? Yeah, when he played for, he got drafted in 94, 95. I wasn't even born yet. So I really caught on the back burner of his career as well when he ended with the Timberwolves. So just being in the locker room, playing with Sam Cassell's son, I remember those, I remember those little things. Who's the toughest guys you went against this year in college? In college, I'll we'll say some tough players would have to be uh, Luke May from North Carolina. Yeah, he, was a, he was a great talent. He's like a, almost a poor man's Kevin Love in a sense, not, not to that extent, but uh, he, he's a great player. Anyone on the perimeter that was kind of tough for you? 
ooh, tough for me. I would say a team, not a particular player, but a team that was pretty tough oh, was Virginia. Their defense was relentless. They, they were well coached. They had some great, great talent on their team. So I would probably say that was the that was the toughest that was the toughest game for me at the time. They were good. Have you had a chance to sit down with Chicago yet? I met with Chicago yesterday. Okay. What what, what kind of questions do they ask? What do they want to know from you? <laughs> yeah, just simply they want to get to know you, know you as a person. They know what you can do on the basketball court. They have so many notes on you from 100 100 pages of notes. So it's really just to get to know you, fill you out, know your personality. So it's that type of thing. I'm hearing the Pistons. I don't know if you met with them yet, but they got these virtual reality glasses or goggles. Oh. Putting players in and simulating plays. Um, oh, that's cool. Is anyone doing anything unique like that that you've experienced so far? No, I have not. No. Just at Duke, when we was at Duke, they had some, there's like a virtual headset with, uh, like you put a phone in it, and it helps you with like hand eye coordination type of thing. Yeah. Earlier you were talking about Minnesota talent. Talk about Theo Giant. Yeah. Earlier you were talking about talent from Minnesota. Yeah. You're familiar with Theo Giant and up there in Marquette. What, yeah. what do you think he's going to bring to the second year out there in Milwaukee? Yeah, he's a great talent. He's came a long, long way. Uh, I've played with him back-to-back -back summers, the uh, last few summers. So it is great to see him. And it's funny seeing everybody that you've grown up with in college, you know. It's great. And he, he's coming together. He's coming full circle. He's been terrific on the Deans of end. And he's going to get his offense in together, too. So it'll be good. Do you think that basketball him. circuit up there in Minnesota is kind of slept on? It seems like everybody talking about Chicago and Detroit, places like that. But Minnesota has a lot of top five talent. Most definitely, we have some great talent. We got a kid named McKinley Wright who went to Colorado. Uh, Brad Davidson, a teammate of mine, he went to Wisconsin. Theo went to Marquette. Uh, we're all on the same AAU team. So Minnesota got some some hidden gems up there. So Harry, you know, can you tell me a little bit about your teammate Wendell? Uh, what mm. the teams expect? Or what can teams expect to get from him when he's drafted early? Teams can expect to, if they draft Wendell that he's a hard worker, uh, a terrific player. But he's an even better person. He's caring. He's loving. There's more to him than just being a basketball player. For example, he's been he took acting classes at Duke. He loves acting. So there's so many levels to him, layers to him. And he's just he's just a great person. I'm glad I can call him one of my closest friends. You ever seen him act? Say that again. Have you ever seen him act? I have. He showed me a couple videos. You yeah. got skills or he good. Okay. He good. <laughs> any uh you got excuse me, you have good. any uh, any uh, secret like, Hidden, hidden talents that I can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, when I was younger, <laughs> in elementary school, I used to sing. But once middle school happened, <laughs> that was over with. So I used to I used to sing, be in choir a lot. You gave it up? I had to. I got terrible. <laughs> Just kind of bouncing off that question. Do you have any uh, interest off the court? Any anything you're like particularly interested in when you're not playing basketball? Yeah, it have to be uh, gaming. I love video games and hanging with my family and my, my three little brothers. It's a joy being around them, watching them grow. So that's really the main two things, just playing with my little brothers in video games. You got, kind of got me off the scent a little bit. I was going to ask you about Wendell's game, and you started talking about acting, but um, <laughs> which is cool. Yeah. But he sacrificed a lot for you guys. This Man, he did. What do you think we would have been able to see out of him if, if he had a chance to play a bigger role and you guys didn't have so much talent? Yeah, if we didn't have so much talent, the things you would see from Wendell is everything that he was doing, because he was still, with all the talent, he was still showcasing everything he could do. So the only thing I'm thinking, if he didn't have that much talent, he would showcase it on a whole a whole nother level. He would be in those conversations for number one pick currently, and instead of being just top five. He could still go number one, and if he did, I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, that's probably the main thing. We'll just see it to more on a higher level and higher numbers, just different things like that. But going to Duke, everybody knew we were sacrificing parts of our games and a little bit of our games for the betterment of the team. So at the end of the day, we can't be mad with that. With so much talent, how did Coach K divide practice up? Like, how did he split up the teams? Well, at the beginning, when we all came in, he promised nobody a spot. We all had to earn our spot. So one day, I would be on the second team. Then one day, Grayson would be on the second team. One day, Wendell, he was, really wasn't a first or second team. And we really didn't have a starting lineup until our first actual game. So well, we just we had, we had to earn everything we wanted. Going against so much talent in practice. How much more did that prepare you guys for this moment? Yeah, it's great. Steel sharp and steel. So there's no way if Wendell is going against Marvin every day or I'm going against Grayson or having to guard Trayvon, he's so quick. It's, it's really, it, it was a great. And that's the part of the reason you chose to go to a school like Duke. Trayvon came in highly talented, highly recruited player. Uh, he's kind of, it looks like from the outside looking in, he slipped 
behind a couple other point guards. What do you feel like he needs to show to get that reputation back and prove that he is one of the elite point guards in this class? Just simply play his game, stay true to who he is, and do what he do best, and that's, that's playing basketball. I mean, he enjoys it, he loves it. Uh, he's a great talent. I still I, I love playing with him. He, he's a great player. Where are you working at? Uh, impact in Vegas. Speaking of former Duke players, Jordan Tucker now at Butler over in Indiana. Yeah, big time. Uh, yeah. What do you see he bringing over there to Butler? We can get a chance to see a lot of him over there. Yeah, uh, I love Jay Tuck. His ability to stretch the floor, shoot the ball, and he has a, a great isolation game. Uh, we played one on one a lot over the summer. Uh, he's a great talent, so Butler's going to get a lot of scoring. Really cool, chill, laid-back guy, and a great basketball player and a great person. He, he's a good, he's a good person. Anything specifically that he needs to work on to kind of get great rotation out there about when he's uh, from to what you see? Yeah, to be honest, it's just simply keep doing what he's doing and turn it up to a whole nother level. Really, just keep doing what he's doing. He works hard. 